warning is a sign of love. This we titled our message today. Say warning is a sign of love. That Ezekiel 33 verse 1 to 6 and that uh, 1 Corinthians 4 14 and Colossians chapter 1 verse 28 but let's read that Ezekiel that Ezekiel 33 Ezekiel 33 when you get home please take time to read the whole chapter of 33 but for now we will only take our reading from verse 1 to 6 <clears throat> the word of the lord came to me saying son of man speak to the to your people and say to them if i bring a, a sword on a land and the people of the land take one man among them and make him their watchman and he sees the sword coming on the land and he blows the trumpet and warns the people whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and take him away his blood will be on his own head he heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning his blood shall be on himself but if he had taken warning, he would have saved, saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are warned, are not warned, and the sword comes and take any one of them and he is taken away because of his corruption, he, because of his sin, but I will require his blood from the watchman's hand are you listening to that are you listening to that let's wrap it with that first corinthians 4. first corinthians 4 14. it says this is the words of Apostle Paul. I do not write these things to shame you or to embarrass you, but to warn you and advise you as my beloved children. Are you listening to that? Old Testament, New Testament, when you look at warning, it's a sign of what? A sign of love to give a warning is a sign of love. Apostle Paul says, I am not saying these things to you, I'm not writing these things to shame you or to embarrass you or to scare you. But I'm warning you as my beloved children. Not intimidation to scare you. You become scared because of what you hear. But as a sign of what? Love. Allow me to take a place of those who have died in your life. Allow me to take the place of those who have departed to raise a warning voice to your life. Allow me. You will agree with me that many accidents that happened in our lives, many wrong decisions that happened in our lives, many bad things that happened in our lives, someone tried to warn us before they happened that someone might have been a stranger someone we did not know it might have been a mother a father of yours 
an uncle, a sister, or a friend. Many disregard God's warning in the same way. They will get angry with anyone who will tell them of the pits and the rocks in their way. But they will understand better at the end. Delay is dangerous. Tell never say delay is dangerous. It is wise to get rid of sin at once. Remaining longer in it, you are sinking deep into it. And the more bitter will be your restoration. There are people today who don't believe as Christians that God is away. There are people today who don't believe that God is really dealing with them because of the bitterness of their restoration. Beware of your habits. If not, they soon become a walking bundles of habits and they yield to their conduct. They pay attention to their conduct in their early stage. If you make an excuse to drink something, if you make an excuse to drink wine and say to yourself, I'm not counting it this time. Yes, you may not count it. Even heaven may not count it. But your nerve says the fibers and the molecules in your body are counting it registering it and storing it up to be used against you when the next temptation comes. What mostly tempt us or what tempt us the most is that thing we did it once. I say be careful of your habits. If not, they soon become a walking bundle of habits. When we talk about sin, there are different types of sin. A drunker always realizes in his sober moment the end of course of his over drinking over indulgence letawali iphumana ha se le hlapohetse mathata ao le a khositse maswabisa ao le a yenze always a drunker always realizes in his sober state the end of course of his over drinking which is loss of self respect a loss of esteem of friends he realizes And the signs 
that will continue to appear in the body which are unsteady hands have you seen people who have drank for years when you see them in the morning what is happening to them unsteady hands and a discolored features you see their face color changes from the original face these are the early signs of the reaping sign of drunkenness which are early detected that is why when they take you for rehabilitation they want to remove alcohol from your body because you might not count it even heaven might forgive you and not count it but your body will count it will store it and register it the same with immoral sin the immoral men the corrupt men the naughty one naughty man reaps the early fruit of his sins in the disease of the body which are effective sign or effective warning against continuing in such path such dangerous path yes let me put it that way not just a path but a dangerous what path because batuba sugudisam haba se bakula ke ho na ke ba jwentsang ka pa ke ho na ke ba bolelang go bona ntontse go ghalemela yo wa bon when they are now on on the bed all of us when somebody who has been giving us trouble in the family in the house when they are sick because of immorality it's time for us to remind them to say do you see I want to call you khalime when they give you medication and they are telling you that I want to call you khalime bona no chena ujwan you can go to toilet you can eat you can do this the moral man reaps the quick harvest of his sin in the disease of the body which are effective warnings against continuing when the person has recovered when he start again we remind them wasimul lahad ole betse ho not ono ape so apusu that is what we normally say to them and this also what we call respectable sin respectable what sin a man may be sowing for years without realizing it until the harvest time comes respectable sin there are those people they sin but they are very gentlemen when they walk like this you can never believe the things you hear about them you say no uh uh-uh. that that lady mm, they are not going to night clubs they don't go to so, those immoral places no they do it decently this is what we call respectable sin there are people when they start harvesting everybody becomes shocked mama ngwakula eh wakula kuti mutho wa apesha wapo lake what you tested hiv 2 years ago this is kind they must do this this is what we call what respectable sin a man may be sowing for years without realizing until time to harvest come people of god listen to me we are weak and sinful by nature all of us it is a good offer for us to pray for deliverance from temptation 
than to ask for strength to resist when temptation has already overtaken us. Prevention is better than the cure. When Jesus said, they asked him, what is, teach us how to pray, Lord. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done, and deliver us. He said, deliver us from what? Not strengthen us to resist. Many of you here are delivered from temptation. While many of you here, you are busy resisting what? Temptation. Prevention is better than the cure. It's better I'm delivered from sin than to be beckoning every day. You are beckoning every day. With the things that you have done, you are beckoning. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. It's because you are trying to resist. It is a good offer for us to pray for deliverance, not for strength. When you are praying for strength, I don't want to do this. It means you are in need. You are sick already. It's like somebody who is sick. You are taking medication to prevent this, to cure. You want to prevent it. I don't want more of this. And there's somebody who is not sick because he doesn't, he's out of that. He's delivered out of it. So you choose. I say to you, prevention is better than the cure. It's better to be out of something than to be battling with it inside. Because sin is a disease of the soul. Pray for deliverance from temptation, not for strength to resist temptation. You'll be battling with it every day when you wake up. You are battling with your habits. Men, men, women, women. Drinking, 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 smoking, smoking. You are battling with all this. Lying, lying, lying. To young people, to pretend that it is necessary to see both sides of life, to taste both sides of life, it is a foolish thinking. Because we are not called to put our hand in the fire to see if it will burn. We are not called to stand on a tall building and jump to see if our bones will not break. It is a foolish thinking for young people to think they have to taste nice time, partying, while partying, and then they will still come this side. It's foolish because there are many things you do there you cannot reverse. If your hand bends, Because you wanted to see it will burn, you will not restore it. It will heal depending on how far you went to the fire. But it will never be like the other hand. To all parents, mothers and fathers in the house, in the home, let us take care of our children. If you don't take care of your children, the devil will care for them. Even if you ignore them, the devil will never ignore them. It is a masterpiece of the devil, a great work of Satan to make us believe, we parents, that our children as young as they are, they cannot understand the Bible. They cannot understand the scriptures. They cannot understand spiritual things. It is a masterpiece of Satan to make us believe that. Why did Jesus use a child as a standard of faith 
if he knew that they don't and they cannot understand his words in Matthew 18 verse 1 to 3 he says unless you become like this little children you cannot enter the kingdom of God what is it about children let me explain that we are lacking as much as we are older than them what is it about them that Jesus used them as a standard it is easy for children to forgive it is easy for children to love and to trust than we adults you know what I'm talking about many of you you go to a church some people are not coming here but their children at home keep telling their mama when are we going to church your neighbors hello hello we should set Christ before them as the supreme object of their choice Many of your friends are not coming to church here because of offense. They are angry with pastor. If it's not pastor, they are angry with the usher. If not usher, they are angry with security. The children have no problem with that. They saw the incident, but they are forgiven. You, you are still sitting there with anger. And what happens? You move to another church with that anger. You move to another church with that bitterness. That is why you see them, some of your colleagues, how many churches they've went to since they left their church. Okay, now Muslim, because of bitterness. They even put that hatred in their children. Nonsense. Look at yourself. What does Jesus call such people? Hypocrite. By gates, holding Bible every Sunday, moving from one church because of what the church A they went to. If you came here because you fought with your pastor, please forgive. And you now you come to hold me with that bitterness, that anger. Yeah, Asha from another church, security from another church, a member, colleague from another church. We gates. Hypocrite. In life, never neglect opportunities. In life. Life is like a battle between two groups or two teams. You know when there is a battle, let me make example with football. You know we watch football 90 minutes. When you watch football from first minute to 90 minutes till the game end and you sit down to analyze the game, what happened? You realize that in each game or in the game, there are 5, 10, 15 minutes that the entire game depends on for the other team to get victory. Should they miss that 15? It might be at the first half. It might be first beginning of second half. That is why every time we sit like this, we say, eh, eh, man, had they scored that goal, they would have wrapped the game first half. In second half, it will just be defending, defending, defending. Life is just like that. All of us here, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 says time and chance happens to us all. It means there is 3, 5, 10 years of your life, 15 years of your life that your success, your good life depends on. Should you miss that, you will live the rest of your life defeated till you die. That's why I'm saying to you, never neglect opportunities in life. You are not in control. 
All of us, God has given us chance. Some of us is three years of your life. God gave you. They say, "I'm gonna give you three years. In these three years, your success depend on it. You, it may be five years. You, it may be ten years. You, it may be fifteen years. That is why we should stop comparing ourselves with others. The Lord said, "I show love on whomever I want to show love." No one can question me. So if God gave you 15 years, brother, to make it right, you are giving five years to make it right. You are comparing yourself to him. Him is still have time. You five years finish, you never make it. You die like that. That's why we don't have to compare ourselves with others. Allow me to ask you a question. Who is your best friend? Ask your neighbor. Who is your best friend? Ask your neighbor. Who is your? I know everybody here has best friend. Who is your best friend? Ask your neighbor. Who is your best friend? Okay. Let me ask you. Let me ask. You. I think. Let us go to individual now, just to get it right, sir. Please, can you stand up? I want us. I want you to be honest with me. Are you listening? God is listening to you. Be truthful. Who is your best friend? Musalla wa hawan neti. Even la listen ko mo na mu bise fela ko kiki jo kapake tabang kapake mu chidi si this. Kima musalla wa hawan neti. Musal musalla wa hawan neti ubila ko alen rich ki is lekhedo. Is lekhedo. Ubu fan teni mo. No ubu alen rich. He's in alen rich. That's your best friend. Yes. We'll come back to is. So the question, the reason I'm asking, who is your best friend, is that the children of Israel had no other friend than Moses. They never went wrong in life because Moses always warned them. Trouble never came upon them except only when they did not listen to Moses. His warning, warning them. That is the children of Israel. You can relate to what I'm talking about. Elijah was the best friend Ahab had in his kingdom as a king. In First Kings 21, from verse 17 to 29, David had Jonathan. As his best friend, who warned him of his father's anger, and many other things you can relate to when you read your Bible. What is the moral behind this question, or the examples I've used? Never have a friend who is equals to you. In life, if you are blind, your friend must have sight. If you are deaf, your friend must have hearing. If you can't talk, your friend must be fluent and be able to talk. That is what me brings value to friendship. God has anointed me. My best friend must be more anointed, so that when I sit with him, I read books that are negative prophecy. Did he heal? He's guiding me. That is my best friend. This is what we call best friends. Please, if I have money, my best friend should not have money like me, but must have something that my money cannot buy, so that whenever we meet, we exchange what we have. Many of you, you call me man of God. You 
you don't know that God did not send me to you as a man of God. I was sent to you to be your best friend. How I wish that I can warn people like Jesus. People were calling Jesus master, master, master. Jesus said, you are my friend. You are no longer slaves or servant. Because a slave does not know the master's affair. But because you are my friend, I tell you everything about my father. When you sit with me, and you are telling me about this, the end of it must be prayer before Zama. Maybe you come to my house, you come to my office, you can sit down in the table, you can be sitting down, and we are talking. Hmm, ah, business, this, job, this, hmm, okay, hmm, this, hmm, no, that's good. So, hmm, this, hmm. We finish our conversation, Mm, let me let me pray for you. Say no. What well, you want to stay? No, no. Sit down there. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thank you. We we'll see you. We'll talk. Thank you. That is best friend. <laughs> but your best friend. Let's say let's say it's a little buwa. Kamu kono le bluffa na gade. Some of us are going to hit a rock along the line of our lives because nobody or oh, we never wanted to associate with people who sees since we are blind. We never want to associate with people who can hear since we are deaf. Listen, you might not believe the Bible, but look at history. And the things that has happened around you and around the people that you know, both the rich and the poor. Beware of sin, because the wages of sin is death. We have been told in the Bible that the wages of sin is death, and those wages have never been reduced. Sin deceives many with the satisfaction that is to be found in it. And the excuses that are to be made for it. And the punishment or the certainty of the punishment that must follow. Sin is deceitful. If it was not deceitful, it would not be delightful. When you talk of righteousness on the other hand, and you talk of unrighteousness, which is sin on the other hand, how can we describe them to our understanding? I ask. Righteousness is like honey. Sin also is like honey, but with poison in it. It comes in an innocent form, in a disguised form, to drain the life blood out of your life and deprive you of your moral capacity to do good. That is sin. You should tell your children that sin is delightful because it is deceitful. If it was not deceitful, do not be delightful. Satan had to disguise, had to cover up, had to dress it nice. No, he knew that nobody would listen to him, Satan. That is why he had to take something from righteousness that is what came about what 
sin. Do not allow the attractiveness of this world to deceive you. It will destroy you and rob your life. May God bless his word in your heart in Jesus name.